There is something that most skincare companies are not telling you. Retinoid, retinol, and retinoic acid are terms that are thrown around interchangeably. So it's understandable if you think that they're all the same thing. But are they? Do you really understand how these anti-aging powerhouses really work? And which specific products are best? Stay tuned to find out. Retinoids are a general term used to describe all vitamin A derivatives. Like a family name, retinol, retinoic acid, retinaldehyde, and adapalene are members of that family. They're under the retinoid family umbrella. So what do retinoids do and why is there almost like a mythical air about them? They're one of the most Googled skin care ingredients out there, and they're also one of the most effective. Retinoids have a profound effect on not just how the skin looks, but more importantly, how the cells that make up different layers of your skin work. From acne to aging to repairing sun-damaged skin, there's a lot that they do. But what we really love about retinoids is that they're one of the most studied skin care ingredients, and we know a lot about them from independent peer-reviewed research. So what are they exactly? Retinoids are a kind of hormone because they have affect how genes and skin cells are expressed. When retinoids enter the skin cell, they interact with something called the retinoic acid receptor. Once the RA receptors are activated by retinoic acid, they bind to special regions of the genome called the retinoic acid response elements, or RARE, a special sequence of DNA where they change the way genes are being expressed in the cell. What genes does retinoic acid turn on? Well, there are three categories. The first is genes that increase cell turnover over in the keratinocytes of the epidermis. This in turn improves the stratum corneum, the outermost layer of your skin, in look, feel, and function. That means less buildup of dead skin, more flexibility, along with a thicker epidermis that does a better job of dividing and replenishing the epidermal layer. The result is smoother, brighter, and more even skin. This is where retinoids really help with acne by allowing the skin to shed its layers that normally would clog pores. The second category of genes that retinoids affect is kicking fibroblasts into high gear. The fibroblast is a specialized cell in the dermis that makes elastin, hyaluronic acid, and collagen. They're like factories that make all the building blocks of your skin's lower structures. This is really important as damage and reduced production of these three components is a hallmark of aging skin, leading to wrinkles, sagging, and a loss of elasticity and plumpness associated with youth. Fibroblasts help make skin thicker, which is another hallmark of youthful skin. Fibroblasts have a second cool function. They inhibit matrix metalloproteinases, or MMPs, enzymes that eat collagen. MMPs are upregulated when skin is exposed to UV rays, one of the reasons retinoic acid is so effective for reversing and protecting against UV damage. This is a function that really helps improve sun damage and aging. The third area where retinoids help is with pigmentation and melanin distribution. Sun damaged skin tends to have spotty pigmentation due to an uneven distribution of melanin. Retinoids help improve the appearance by regulating distribution. And what's the net result of these three things? Thicker, firmer, smoother, brighter, more even skin. No wonder retinoids are such a buzzworthy ingredient. But how do you choose the right one? Retinol or retinoic acid? Well, first we need to understand the difference. Though retinoic acid and retinol are both retinoids, which are vitamin A derivatives, and both work by increasing cell turnover and collagen, they are not interchangeable changeable products, and you shouldn't treat them as such. As much as cosmetics companies confuse this at times and try to convince you otherwise. Retinoic acid, or tretinoin, is the active form of the hormone. It's retinoic acid that binds to the RA receptor. It doesn't need any processing or enzymatic activation. It works as soon as it's applied to the skin. This makes it a much more potent product, and that's why it's a prescription drug. Retinol is the precursor to retinol retinoic acid. It's oxidized reversibly to retinaldehyde by the enzyme retinol dehydrogenase after retinol binds to cellular retinol binding protein type 1. It can go back and forth. Retinaldehyde is then irreversibly converted to retinoic acid by retinaldehyde oxidase. These three limiting steps need to happen in order to take retinol 
to retinoic acid. What that means is that retinols are universally less potent. They can be gentler on the skin, but they just can't be as effective as the prescription product. This is because even at very high concentrations, not all the retinol in the product will be converted to retinoic acid. There are too many limiting factors, and enzymes don't work like that. Those processes also take time, and though retinol can be stored by cells, it is also degraded. The result is that it takes longer to see outcomes with retinol, and the results are usually not as impressive. This is really a factor to consider depending on the skin condition that you're treating. For example, acne patients might go straight to the prescription products. So why use retinol over retinoic acid? Who are they each good for? Before we continue, please like this video if you've learned something so far, and subscribe to the channel. Retinol definitely has its place. Lots of people don't tolerate prescription retinoic acid well and experience peeling, redness, or irritation. Retinol is a viable option because it's a gentler formula. Remember, retinol needs to be converted to retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is active. There is no going back to retinol or storing it. However, even though retinol is not as potent, users can still get benefit from it. It can help with wrinkles, mild acne, skin pigmentation, and sun damage. For some people, not needing a prescription is a huge plus. It can also be a good starting point to work up to the prescription product. And you don't need to spend a lot to get a great product. If you're interested in retinol and want a great product, here are some affordable options. For normal skin, consider CeraVe Surfacing Retinol Serum. It's a great gentle formula with ingredients such as ceramides that can calm and moisturize the skin, counteracting the dryness retinol can cause. If you have dry skin, consider Olay Regenerist Retinol 24, another drugstore staple, which is great for dry skin and it's a moisturizing vehicle. If you have acne, consider Adapalene, which goes goes by brand name Differin. It's a synthetic retinoid that has a high affinity for the retinoic acid receptors. It does not have to be oxidized like retinol, but it's considered gentler than retinoic acid. La Roche-Posay also has an affordable option called the Effaclair Adapalene Gel 0.1% Topical Retinoid Acne Treatment. These are just a few options. There are many more options available online or at your local drugstore. We will eventually have our own retinol option. Go to feelconfident.com for the latest information on our skincare and hair care products. Make sure to sign up to the newsletter for weekly blogs and to know when we drop our next product. So who is retinoic acid for? If you aren't getting the results you want with retinol or are dealing with more severe acne, then a trip to your doctor for a retinoic acid prescription might be something to explore. There are many different formulations and generic options. So how do you incorporate retinoids into your skincare routine? Here are some general guidelines. Don't overdo it. Start slow and at low concentrations. Retinoids are an active ingredient. Too much too soon won't get you results sooner and will increase your risk of irritation. Retinoids can be just as effective when applied every other day, especially when you're starting out. Work up to every night. Remember, retinoids can be irritating and can cause redness. And though they can counteract sun damage, they also make the skin more susceptible to damage. More isn't better. Retinoid product manufacturers and doctors recommend you apply a pea-sized amount. Out. More will only waste the product and increase the risk of irritation. Apply the product at night. Many retinoid products are unstable in the sun. Be careful mixing with other active ingredients, such as benzoyl peroxide, acids, vitamin C, and other medications. They can increase irritation. Moisturizer could be your friend. If you're having difficulty getting your skin used to a retinoid, you can try mixing it with a gentle moisturizer when you apply it. This can help dilute it on the skin and is a staple recommendation from many dermatologists. Be patient and consistent. It can take six weeks to see results. Don't use retinoids during pregnancy. Discontinue retinoids three to seven days before lasers or other energy devices as they can increase the risk of complications. One of the most important things to remember is of course sun protection. Whether you use prescription strength retinoic acid or over-the-counter retinol, you need to wear sunscreen. Retinoids increase sun sensitivity by a lot. Check out this video on inexpensive versus more expensive sunscreen to see which one we thought was better. Do you use retinol or retinoic acid? Which do you prefer? Let us know in the comments below and let us know which other skincare ingredients you would like us to review. Check out our other skincare products related video.